Hey guys, it's Kelly Slim, licensed and certified pediatric speech language pathologist, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys for joining me again for another Apraxia video based on your comments, requests, and questions. And so if you haven't seen my first Apraxia video uh, that teaches basic um, hand cues for vowels, I'm gonna put it right up here. And then again, I made another video based on your comments or requests, and that was for the first three developing sounds um, for consonants, and that was M, P, and B. And I went ahead and did the hand cues to teach y'all so that you can teach your little ones at home. And I'll put that right up here as well. And make sure to subscribe to my channel. Um, I can see about 85% of people viewing these videos are not subscribed to my channel. So um, if you could do that, that would be great. And then also hit the thumbs up or thumbs down video so that I know what kind of content you guys like. Um, you won't be notified unless you turn on the little bell next to the subscribe button. But if you could just subscribe, that would be great. And that way you'll get first access and it will highlight your comments for all of my videos whenever you comment or uh, make a request or ask a question on my page. Okay guys, so we're gonna dive right into it. So today is basically the third video in our series on apraxia. And so I just happen to have a lot of experience treating pediatric patients with a childhood apraxia of speech or suspected apraxia of speech. And again, do not worry. I know that it's like such a big diagnosis or suspected diagnosis, but please don't worry. It can be treated. And I know personally that I've had uh, 10, like lots of tens of clients, maybe 50 clients now that have had a proxy of speech or childhood a proxy of speech, and they've all made so much progress and I'm so, so proud of them. So today I'm going to teach you just a couple of different ways that I take the steps to properly treat a proxy of speech. I know a lot of therapists have their own approaches, so check in with your therapist, um, or if you don't have a therapist, then maybe try these approaches at home. So today I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to give some examples and I'm also going to throw up this on my um, Facebook page which is speedy speech path and on my instagram at speedy speech um and so today we have um the first thing we're going to talk about is vowels and again that was that first video so anytime you see the v letter right here it means a vowel and then we have the c letter which means a consonant and again we had that video for m p and b and so we're just tagging right along here so we're going to talk about vowels those m p b sounds as well as the T and D sound, and those are the next two developing consonants in our speech repertoire for um, whenever a child develops sounds over time. So that's the next age appropriate sound for your little one. Okay, and so these are the three things we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna ease into it. First, we have CBCB word. So that is just a word like mama, where it is the same vowel and the same consonant. So we're just repeating. So at the top, we might've had a word like at, which would be the vowel and then the consonant. Or you might have a word like boo, which is the consonant and then the vowel there. And so here again in mama, we have CVCV, like mama. So that would be a good target to move on to CVCV. Okay, so today though, I really wanna focus on the CV1, CV2. And that just means that the vowel is altering. So these are words like mommy, where the first vowel is the ah, and the second vowel is that e, but it's the same consonant over and over again. So this is the next step for your little one to take once they're able to say things like mama, baba, papa, things like that. We're ready to change up that second vowel there. Or a word that's um, even a little bit harder like k, like this, k, u, k, e. So again, you have your same k sound with that Q. And then you also have your u, and then k and e, where the vowel changes again. So I've got a couple of different things. And then finally, I like to do CVC last because a lot of words, like even the word bus, with our hand cue also have an S video as well um, if you need that. But um, a lot of those sounds are later developing. Um, and so we really wanna target those sounds that are developmentally appropriately appropriate for your little one, especially if you are thinking that they might have a proxy of speech because that's just gonna make it too difficult for them and then they're gonna shut down and not wanna try. So what we really wanna do is find something that they're successful at, like those vowels, and then add on those developmental sounds like M, P and B like that. So I have a couple of different cues right here. So I'm gonna explain. I just went through these and pulled these out of my drawer right here. I do have actual apraxia cards, but just so I could show you guys at home how you might do this with your books or with little flashcards that you have. I got this set at Costco, which is great. Um, 
but you can use it for anything. So here I have a cow, and if your child has the K sound, is what we call it in phonetics, if they have the K sound, then that's a great word, but a lot of these little ones are not gonna have that sound just yet. So what we wanna do is target moo like that, and that's that first level, level one word, is the consonant and then the vowel. So you see the M here is the consonant and the OO is the vowel. So moo. And again, don't move on until your child is getting like at least 80% of the time they can say the word moo. Whenever you say, what does the cow say? And remember to wait. What does the cow say? Yes, moo. That's what the cow says. And then once they're able to do that eight out of 10 times, as well as other CV and BC words, that's whenever we wanna move on to that second step, but not just yet if they're not there yet, okay? Okay, another CV word. A lot of the numbers happen to be CV or VC words. So here we have the word two, as in one, two. Again, so a different touch cue. If I was gonna use the word cat, I would say cat like that, because the K sound is picking the chin up. It reminds the tongue to fall to the back of the throat. I also have a K and G video if you're interested in that. But remember, let's stay with those T, the T, the D, M, P, and B sounds. So again, for T, ooh, what a great CV word. T, ooh, oh, how many? One, T, ooh, with your little one, right? Okay, so they're really starting to get those CV words and you're getting really excited. So you can try to move on to a CVC word where the last sound is a different consonant, but I would really try to stick with those M, P, and B. And then if your child has T and D, that's great. Like pop, that would be a CVC word there with the same consonant sound or a sound that's developmentally appropriate for them. Okay, and then here is what we're talking about today. The C V1, C, V2 words, meaning that we have one consonant, one vowel, the first vowel, and then we have another consonant, and then a changed vowel, and that is seen like in the word ma me, right? So we have ma m e, ma me, and a lot of times I'll drag it out. The hand cues are important. You're like, why do you keep touching your face and like doing these weird hand cues? It's because it's important because it trains the brain. It's a visual cue and verbal cues are the most aggressive other than tactile cueing where I'm actually touching your hand. And a lot of times with my little kiddos with apraxia, I will, I'll grab their little lips. I'll, I will pick up their hand and touch their nose with them. And we'll work on it over and over again. And then whenever we wanna take away a cue, we take away the verbal cue because that's the most aggressive form. So if I was gonna say pup, I might say and wait for them to do the p sound and they say, oh, good job. There's one more at the end. Here we go, p, and then have them add that cue on. Or here, if we're gonna do the word k, ooh, k, and that's that big E sound there. So we have k, ooh, k, E, just like that. So that is our CV1, CV2 word. Other words like mommy, I'm also gonna put a link in the bottom for two worksheets that you can um, click on to pop up that have a bunch of CV1, CV2 words so that you can work on these. And here is our picture of the cookie. So again, just showing you that these could be anything. This is a gingerbread man was the word on the card, but I'm using it as cookie. Okay, and then finally, if your child is really working hard, they can work on some CVC words if your child is 80% with those CV1, CV2 words, okay? All right, so we have bike. <laughs> that was way too many sounds there. So we have bike, and if they need the vowel, it would be b a e k, and it's a diphthong vowel, meaning that there's two sounds in the vowel, which is a little bit tricky, and that's why I really think we have to stick with those CV1, CV2 words before we move on to even regular CVC words. All right, and then um, we have one more. Really try to sit and look at the words because a lot of times we're asking kiddos, especially if they have apraxia, to say too many words or too difficult words whenever we really just need to be sticking with these very simple, easy to move for their oral motor articulators sequencing of sounds, okay? So here's the word bus. So CVC word and bus, bus, to drag it all together. And this word just seems so simple, right? Sofa, 
but whenever we break it down, I want you to look here. It's actually a C1, V1, C2, V2. So you've got four different sounds here. This word is not appropriate for working with a child with apraxia right away because this is way too many sounds. It's four different sounds. And at the same time, you have an S and an F, and that F is so late in developing speech sounds. So I'm actually going to put a chart at the bottom for you um, so you can see at what year these kiddos should be accomplishing those sounds. All right, guys, I know it's a long video, but thanks for liking and sharing and subscribing these videos. These are all for you. So you just let me know if there's anything that you need help with working with your little one at home and I'll see you next time. Also check out my new website. It's speedyslp.com. It's up and going now. All of my resources are there. And again, everything is